So my name is Jessica Harris and I am very proud to be a music therapist and I studied right here at the Royal Irish Academy of Music. Okay, so how I got into music therapy is a little bit of an interesting story. Um, I had always had a background interest in music therapy and I'd, I'd always um, had that in the back of my mind as I was doing my music degree. So I, I studied performance through college and then through my master's. And after my master's in London, um, my sister in Canada was involved in a car accident. And while she was recovering, she, had, uh, she, was, she was offered music therapy. And so I got to see music therapy in action and I got to meet a music therapist. I had always sung to her. I was even singing in the hospital with her while she, she was initially, she was in a coma. So I was singing with her there. I was singing her with her in the hospital, songs that she would have been listening to before she had her accident. Um, so I was using music a lot with her to connect with her during that time. And I didn't quite understand all the ways in which music therapy could benefit and support someone at that time. But I was just using music with her as a means for me to feel like I was being closer to her as well. And um, can I ask, is, did your sister, is your sister okay? She's fabulous. Yeah, she's fabulous. She's made she's, a full recovery. She's an absolute miracle. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> can you tell me what music therapy is? Basically, it's just working towards goals. It could be communication goals, speech and language goals. All, all that hard work that we, we might be doing outside of using music, but through the medium of music to provide motivation and distraction and lots of fun while we're doing it. So for example, if we're working towards developing our speech and language, we might be using songs, um, we might be using activities which are encouraging us to sing or to speak through the activities and all the while we'd be using music as a base, as the base medium, so we'd be doing it all through music. Um, we might be using a bit of movement. For example, in the nursing home, often I would use movement as, as a means of um, crossing over the front section of our brain so that we're using both frontal lobes of our, of our brain. Um, and that can also be powerful. There's lots of evidence now reporting about how the brain is not static and how movement can also help us to nurture and develop our brains um, and stimulate our brains. Um, if we are working on forms of communication, if we're little, for example, some of the, some of the young people that I'm uh, privileged to work with who have autism, we might be working on means of communication like turn taking, like eye contact, all that kind of meaningful communication that really means that we, that we learn um, how to communicate within a wider circle then outside of that. Might be improvising, which is creating spontaneous music. We might use some music based activities and songs. Songwriting might be one technique we use. Um, I've had clients who have written some beautiful songs. We might be looking at song lyrics and how they, um, how they affect us, how they relate to us, how they, how they um, move us. So those could be some of the techniques that you might see being used in a music therapy session. So in terms of maybe an example of, of someone who is immediately connected with music therapy, um, I, I, nice, I continue to work with um, a young gentleman um, in his early 20s and so when he approached me first um, he, he, was, he is non-verbal and the very first time I met him he was unable to come and sit down. The next, the second time I met him we were say he came in and sat straight down with me at the keyboard and we started to play together. Um, and he sat there for a full half hour and we explored the full range of the keyboard and we explored creating new melodies together. We explored different chords and chord patterns and, and uh, me singing and creating music with him. And it was just beautiful to see this whole other aspect and facet of this person emerge. And, um, and it's also, it's always lovely to see someone smiling and enjoying their experience with music as well because I think that's a really big important factor when we're talking about how music is going to motivate us into, uh, into benefiting our lives. Yes, um, I mean this person experiences setbacks from time to time for sure but he's always enthusiastic about coming into music um, and there definitely have been improvements outside of music. I think it showed everybody around him and this different aspect of his personality and how he responded to music. And so now music can be used throughout his life in different ways as well.
What okay. would you say to people who think that music therapy is not evidence based and should be lumped in the same category with other alternative medicines? So for people who might be a bit curious and who might be wondering, is this a clinical profession? I would absolutely invite them to look at the evidence, the supporting evidence. And also I would invite them, like I think, I think um, to see a session in person is very powerful and to see um, a video image of a session is very powerful. Obviously we have lots of confidentially, uh, confidential issues around that. Um, because a big important part of the way we work is the relationship between the therapist and client and sometimes videoing or, or, allowing, or allowing the session to be seen by, by people outside of the session can have an effect on the session. So um, I suppose we have to be super careful with that. But I would absolutely invite them to explore it further and to see because there is absolutely bountiful um, evidence in all directions to show that this is really can really be something very meaningful. So it has been backed up by... Absolutely. Scientists.